There is a stereotype that women in their 60s are slowing down. We're not getting out into the world. We're sitting at home, maybe doing our knitting or reading or sitting on the porch in our rocking chair. But of course, this is not true. Women in our 60s and 70s are busy. We're out doing things in the world. Um, you know, we're, we're working, uh, traveling. But sometimes, I think sometimes we get a little too busy <laughs> and we let busyness overtake us and really um, challenge our priorities as to what we want to do and what we really should be doing. So I want to talk to you today about how to prevent busyness from overtaking your life and helping to reprioritize the things that are important to you. My name is Margaret Manning. I'm with 60 and Me, and I want to thank you so much for being here with me. I'm really welcoming you here. I'm looking forward to this conversation today. Now, our show is brought to you today by Easy Spirit. Easy Spirit is a company that makes uh, really comfortable, fashionable shoes for women. They've been doing it for many years now, and they've got a whole new line of products, uh, fabulous boots and athletic shoes. And uh, I invite you to check it out on their website, easyspirit.com. And they love the idea of comfort. They believe everything is possible when you're comfortable. And um, if you look below in the um, description of this article under the video, you will see a promotional code for 20% off a purchase of Easy Spirit shoes. So thanks to Easy Spirit. Okay, so here's the topic about um, busyness today. Now, it's so funny. I We've got a blogger, Delia Lloyd, who I actually love her writing. She's so funny, but um, she talks about her own situation with busyness and how she basically has friends saying, you know, can you get together and have a coffee? And she goes, well, you know, I'm just like really insane. All of November is like completely full. <laughs> And it's like her friends are saying, okay, Delia, I think that's because you've chosen to make it really full and busy. Um, you know, here I am, your friend, I'd like to get together. But Delia says, no, nope, she's got work to do. She's got things, you know, to keep her occupied. She's got, you know, she's looking for this, doing that. And it's so funny when I read that, I thought, oh, that's so silly. But then I looked at my own calendar and I've got a friend, Christine, who we don't get together very often because she works uh, full time still. And she actually travels a lot. And she, and she said, emailed me and said, hey, Margaret, I think we're going to get together this Saturday. And it was like, oh, my gosh, yes. But I've got now this other thing that I have to do. Um, can you make next Saturday? She goes, oh, no, I've got to, I'm traveling to Cuba and I'm going to be doing this with work. And uh, can you make uh, the first week in December? And it's like, no, I've got something on that first week of December <laughs> So this is ridiculous. Christine is super important to me. She's a really good friend. And yeah, I'm letting my busyness get in charge, you know, in control. So Delia writes this article, which I think is very important because it's not just about being busy, which is maybe a sign of being disorganized or being uh, unclear about your priorities. But there's almost an addiction to being busy. Somehow you feel like if you're busy and you've got things in your calendar, you've got lunch engagements, you've got meetings, that somehow your life has substance, it has meaning and purpose. It's really interesting when I was working in corporate world, which I'm sure many of you have done, um, you know, we kind of would get in the habit when somebody would say, well, how are you doing? I mean, would you like to go have a coffee? And we say, oh, no, I'm just crazy right now. It's so busy. And people would go, yeah, I know, I understand. And it was like a kind of a language, a language of busyness that somehow if you were, if your calendar was full, somehow <laughs> that meant that you were, you were doing okay, that you were living a meaningful, full life. Of course, it's silliness. I mean, you've got people that are really important to you who are at the bottom of that line of, of you know, people to get together with, your family, your close friends, people that may be in your, your neighborhood or people that could really do with some, just, you know, a hug or some support. And you don't prioritize them because you're caught up in your busyness. And what is that? She says, some people, um, according to Delia, well, and I think this is true. I mean, they put, do it right way around, which is they put their friends and family and work and put their work around that, especially when you're retired a little bit. If you're working full time now, I kind of still get it and I understand. But if you're retired, you, you know, you tend to, in my opinion, would be benefit from putting your family first and your and your friends first and then your work around that. And that's actually quite honestly what I try to do. I just have a lot of things in both of those categories, but, but we all do. I mean, I'm not making excuses, but uh, that's her goal. But she said, what is at the heart of this? She says it's a fear of death. And I actually think there's some truth to that. Uh, it's a fear, not so much of the actual act of aging and, and dying, but it's actually a fear of, of missing out, a fear that if you don't do all these things now, if you don't make all these plans, 
go to this show, go to this meeting, go to this, you know, activity, that somehow you're not going to, you're not going to do it in time, that you're somehow going to run out of time. And I think that that's a very intelligent and, and interesting conversation. Um, you know, she, somehow she feels if she hasn't got these 10,000 things to tick off of her to-do list, that she's just not making the most of life. And that fear of, you know, of uh, letting something pass by is at the heart of her constant busyness. She remembers her mom, and I actually, I can see myself doing this sometimes too. She said her mom would always say to her, like, I'm cold, put on your coat. <laughs> In other words, she would say, I'm cold, put on your coat. Uh, like putting her own needs onto someone else. And I think that uh, she, Delia, Delia says that she does the same thing with her daughter because her daughter is uh, in you know young, that age of young busyness where she's just always going out to meet with friends or putting her friends in, uh, in priorities first. And Delia is always saying, don't be so busy. And sometimes you've got to listen to the things you say to other people that really are a reflection of yourself. I remember when I was working with Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, she actually said to me um, a quote that, oh, my, my poor sons hear this all their, their lives, but it's just a quote that is so true to me. And that is, people will often criticize in other people the things that they fear most in themselves. People will criticize the things in other people that they fear most in themselves. And I can only, I don't even want to point to some of the examples of that because some of them are so dramatic that people who are so anti one thing or another end up being the people that are involved in that kind of situation themselves. Very, very powerful. But the thing is, if you're constantly finding yourself busy and you're constantly pulling, you know, tugging at what's important, think about the things that you say to other people. Are you always saying, you know, why don't you make more time for your family or you know, when was the last time you had, you know, lunch with me? I'm your friend. Let's, let's go have lunch. And then they said they were busy. Think about the things you ask of other people and see if you can apply it to your own situation. Bottom line, I, and I think that Delia gets this and she's kind of talking a little bit tongue in cheek here with her own situation, but she feels like I do, that you really have to prioritize the things that are super important to you in your 60s and 70s and 80s. Of course, you know, you're maybe not working as much in those years, but prioritize the important things and put your busyness on the other side. Work your busyness into taking time just to sit with someone and listen. Use, you know, your ability to just understand what they're going through. Take some time for your family and your grandchildren. Don't rush through the conversations with them. Let them tell you what's going on. I just think it's really important. Put family and, fr and friends first. Slow down a little bit. You don't have to do all those busy things and uh, see how you feel after that. So how do you feel? I mean, I've, I've, I mean, I've actually... One thing I picked up this card this morning on our my out of my deck, my deck of inspirational cards, and and the first one I picked up was learn to say no, and I think that card is more about um, saying no to other people, but I think it's also about saying no to yourself. <laughs> Like when you're trying to, when you're getting caught up with all these things that are just taking you away from the people that matter, say no, say no to yourself. And as I've said many times before, no is a complete sentence. You don't have to justify it or explain it. Just, just do it. <laughs> just say no to yourself and to your busy self and let the other self, more compassionate self come out. So what do you do when you feel overwhelmed and, and busy? Do you, do you tend to do the same thing as Delia? Kind of use your busyness to hide your your fear of missing out. Leave your comments section below. Let's have, have a conversation. What do you think is the easiest way in your experience to slow down and live a little bit more of a simpler, calmer, more compassionate life? I look forward to your comments. I really do. I join, I'll join in the conversation myself and tell me what when you've learned to say no to yourself. Let's have a conversation about, about that as well, creating some boundaries. Have a really wonderful day, everybody. I hope that you're doing great and I look forward to talking with you all again in the future very soon. Bye-bye for now.